Thanks a lot, Dr. Joy. I received your email. Yeah, that's great. Okay, great. Uh, where is I? I must have fallen off. Oh, there he is. I. I can you hear me? Yeah, I can. I can hear you. Okay, how are you doing today? Pretty good, John. Uh, how about you? Yeah, great. Well, I uh, will go where you want to go, uh, and uh, thank you for taking the time. I'm all, I'm and, all uh, set, John. Yeah, uh, so we'll let you structure this the way you want to, Ipe. We have, what, 20 people here, neurosurgeons from all over the world. Uh, okay. And uh, I, I don't know what you want to do, Ipe. You want to meet each one of them, or you want to just go ahead and presenting, or what do you want to do? No, we're going to have a discussion, so um, I'd rather start showing cases right okay. now. Okay, so okay, very good. Have... Okay, it's all yours. Okay, so when do we start? Yes, you're all set. Where, okay, I'm going to share, John. Okay. All set? Yes. Okay. So first thing first, um, of, uh, for a lot of meetings that we go, we, we see that the interventions are now uh, dominating and uh, the number of aneurysms that people are doing all over the world, especially in the West, is coming down so much. One country that is not really being affected that I see is uh, Japan, because I see a lot of uh, Japanese neurosurgeons clipping a lot too. I mean, it's not that they have a lack of facilities for interventions. For example, I was in Fujita for a long time and uh, they have a very good interventionist team, but still they are going on clipping. So, you know, one must look into why it's happening. Um, it is not that all aneurysms are good for clipping or all aneurysms are good for coiling. But uh, for a well-trained aneurysm surgeon, most of the aneurysms, uh, they can be clipped. Well, if there is a difficult uh, aneurysm, you could do a bypass. But then uh, the need for that is uh, almost, uh, you know, almost nil. I mean... You have was working in my center for almost nine months, and uh, what, whatever talks I had with you, have he's never felt the need to bypass an aneurysm, uh, and even if it it is so, it's very rare. And uh, my teacher and my mentor, Professor Sano, who's got a Guinness Book of World Records uh, for a number of aneurysms, he also tells me the same thing that uh, he's never felt the real need to go ahead and bypass for aneurysms. But uh, we may not be as gifted as they are. So sometimes we may have to bypass some aneurysms. Um, and, you know, these two skills, clipping and in a rare case, a bypass, can handle most of the aneurysms. Now, what is the science of aneurysms? And what is the art of aneurysms? Every young neurosurgeon, you know, who aspires to become a vascular neurosurgeon, um, their, you know, their main thing is about skull base and vascular. So skull base and vascular are interrelated because uh, all the vessels are in the skull base. So if you're going to get access to the vessels, you need to know your skull base. If you cannot be a skull base neurosurgeon, you cannot be a vascular. The only neurosurgeon who is not really, the only vascular neurosurgeon, real good vascular neurosurgeon who is not really a skull-based neurosurgeon, maybe, maybe people like Yasagil who is not purely skull-based, but uh, he, they were excellent vascular neurosurgeons because they could access the base with sylvian dissection, excellent sylvian dissection. So um, I was with Yasagil uh, about six months back and I was seeing his videos. It's, uh, it's amazing. It's uh, amazing how he goes and dissects the sylvian to get into every part of the brain. You know, they could get into the basilar, they could get into the uh, ACOM region, they could get into the MCA, they could even get into the opposite MCA. Now that's possible. But uh, if you have a bit of skull base also in your hands, then uh, your, your, your work becomes much more perfect. So let's uh, see some aneurysms right now. So I'm going to share the um, 
share the screen. Last time we shared a Basla tip uh, um, aneurysm. So I hope you remember that. So I'm going to share a very uncomplicated aneurysms. I'm not going to show you anything fancy today. I'm going to show you some clippings where you need to remember a few things. That's all. It's, this is primarily aimed for the young residents. I'm going to share my desktop. Right. Okay. Let's, can you see my desktop? Uh, hold on, I, hold on, I, let me check here. Hold on. Can you yes. see? Uh, okay. Yes, I can. Yes, we can. Excellent picture. Right. So, okay. Can you see this uh, aneurysm? I'm going to show you the, the loop here. Can you see this? Yeah. If see any this yeah. If any panelists want to mend, uh, unmute and comment. Okay. Can you see this picture? It's a very simple, inferiorly pointing ACOG. Okay, um, probably done uh, two or three weeks back. So, um, or maybe, um, maybe a month or two months back. I don't know. I mean, uh, somebody collected all this and uh, then asked me to, you know, look at it. Now you can see the ipsilateral A1. You can see the ACOM. You can see the contralateral A1, and the aneurysm is parallel to the ACOM. You can see the aneurysm being clipped there. Can you see that, everybody? Yeah, this is one yeah. of the most. Go ahead, come yeah, on. This, yeah. this is one of the most uncomplicated uh, cases. I mean, it's an inferiorly pointing ACOM. It's it had ruptured. It's a bad grade aneurysm, but uh, there's not much of a problem clipping it. So here. I mean, you can identify, once you identify the A1, the hubeners, the contralateral A1, the A2 turns on both sides, the A comb, you can straight away go ahead and clip it. I'm going to, not going to show you the dissections, but then now I'm going to go into another one. Okay. Okay. See that? That's an MC aneurysm. Opening the dura, opening the cisterns. Revealing the aneurysm. Now in MCA, we generally, uh, what my technique is, I generally um, get the ICA bifurcation so that I have proximal control. And then I go ahead and dissect right on the aneurysm. Okay, so when we dissected right on the aneurysm, we saw that is the MCA. This is a bifurcation. This is what we thought, there's a bifurcation here. There's a vascular weakness here. And that's the aneurysm. There's probably a vessel there, but this aneurysm is under this under this uh, retractor. And uh, you know, if you try to dissect it further, you may hello, ah, you may end up rupturing it. So you see what we did. You can see the vascular anomaly there, which is the aneurysm starting there. You can see the MCS stem coming out there. So we're going to put a clip right across that because we really don't know where the aneurysm is pointing we really don't know what is happening there so you're going to put a clip right across there and then go look for the aneurysm it's a bit messy when i generally don't use temporary clips but then when this thing is stuck there trying to dissect it with a stem uh, clip is not the best idea so i put a clip right across and then put another clip 
try to dissect this. You can see it will rupture now. Taking it away from the brain that it's stuck to. So you can see that's aneurysm sac. It's ruptured now. Can you see that? It's ruptured now. Now, we know where is the rupture, so we just clip the rupture point. Now it's very easy to go back. So you take clips one by one, off, and there is a vessel, there is, this branch is there. So I can identify where is that branch. I take off the clips. And then I reapply it on the aneurysm. And the other one, again, one more again. I, then that way we save the branches. There's a branch here. You see that branch? So I'm just saving that branch. And see, that's a branch. It's done. So now we look at the ICG. And the other branch did not have much flow. So we are uh, reapplying it again so that the other branch is nicely saved. That's it. You can see the other branch now. That is the aneurysm rupture point. <clears throat> That's a branch which didn't have flow, but uh, with a little bit of uh, massage there. We get good flow there. And let us go into something else. This is in 3D, so I'm sorry I... Uh, this is a slightly more difficult take on. Very bad. So you can see, you know, here the ACOM is almost... Uh, you cannot do... You cannot do... I mean, you cannot uh, uh, take this A2 away so that... See, this aneurysm is pointing on both sides of the A2. So you need a fenestrated clip there. Okay, so you're putting in a fenestrated clip. You can look at one images. You can look at one of the images. It's a ruptured, acutely ruptured aneurysm. Ruptured. I mean, we, we clipped it on the same day that it ruptured. And that's a A2 saved. Ipsilateral A2 is on this side. The aneurysm ruptured again during the clipping, but that is so. I'm not happy with this A2 again, so I'm, I want to reapply it. So you can see the A1, the A2, the A comb, and the ipsilateral A2 is on this side. So the aneurysm is around the A comb A2 junction. So I'm just reapplying it again going a little bit more further and reapplying it. Now it's, it's much better. So sometimes you, you need a fenestrated clip. It's really, really helpful. So fenestrated angle clips, fenestrated right angle clips, fenestrated straight clips, they are really useful. Now let us see something else, a little bit more complicated uh, ACOM. You know, people say, ACOMs are easy, PCOMs are easy. Wait till you see complicated ACOMs. So now, you see this one. That is a optic nerve. That is an optic nerve. You have A1, A1, contralateral A1 there. You see a large vessel there. Definitely not the A2. So I'm not seeing the A2 there. The aneurysm is posteriorly pointed. So... I need to see the A2 here. I need to see the A2 in, on this side. 
Without that, I cannot put the clip on. Okay. So there is a dilatation here, but the aneurysm was posteriorly pointing. So we need to look for this aneurysm, which is posteriorly pointed. So we are looking. And you know, it's just not about a posteriorly pointed aneurysm. It is about where the both A2s are. And if you don't have space between these two A2s, it's a bit difficult. And you see how high this aneurysm is. As usual with the quick time player, <laughs> gets a bit stuck. So, Okay, so let's see how we are dissecting this aneurysm. You see further more of this aneurysm there. You have to be very, very patient and very, very gentle because these are ruptured aneurysms. These are not unruptured aneurysms. So now you're seeing the A2. The A2 is going posteriorly there. You see the entire system now that is a contralateral A1 optic nerve, ipsilateral A1 on this side. You seeing the A2 and the aneurysm starting to see there. Now you're seeing the aneurysm. See? That is A2, that's aneurysm. You see how, how complex this aneurysm structure is. You remember the first case, A2, the aneurysm was so easy. But now, you see you have a hubner's here. You have the A2 on, A1 on this side, A1 on this side, A2 there. There's a vessel taking off like that. There's an A2 here, there's an A2 there, and that is aneurysm. It's a small aneurysm, very small aneurysm. But you see how difficult this guy could be. See, if you are not careful enough, you, you, you can, if you are panicking, you could go and clip this entire complex. You could clip, you, you think that this is the aneurysm you, because you've seen the A2 here. And if you think this is the aneurysm and you, you could easily put a clip across like that, and that will result in the patient get, getting a lot of deficits. So, so you can see the A2 there. So we are further defining this aneurysm. Going on, defining it, sharp dissection, water, sharp dissection, blunt dissection, then sharp dissection again, so high zoom. See now you, the, you can see the A2 going in there, there's this vessel there, and then you have this aneurysm there. So the, the dome arachnoid is being spared. So we are slowly trying to take off this arachnoid strand so that we can put in a clip. Very, very important because if you don't take in those strands, you put in a clip and that'll be it, rupture. So you have to be very careful and very gently take off with, a, with this probe. You can slowly dissect this and make sure you have enough space for the clip to pass. Take enough and more time, as much as time you want. And once you do that, once you do that, you can put in a clip. I mean, in this case, I would have preferred a much smaller clip. But then sometimes, you know, 
you don't have the clip that you need. That is one of the problems that you find in India and Nepal. You would want to have a micro clip, then you, you, the micro clip applicator wouldn't be working, or there won't be micro clips, there won't be suitable micro clips. So, I mean, one thing you learn is that you learn to clip any aneurysm with any clip. Okay, so this is not the ideal clip for that, but then see, that is clipped now. All right, but it is a really complex ACOM aneurysm here. Okay, it's a, the ACOM complex itself is complex. Okay, so that's what I wanted to tell you. Sometimes ACOMs can be easy, sometimes it could be a pain. All right, so now let's see a, one more aneurysm. It's a double aneurysm. It's a IC bifurcation and a PCOM. So, and uh, that is our theater. You can see the double aneurysm there. So you see, that is an IC. And you see, the A1 is a very posterior origin, extremely posterior origin. That is the optic nerve, that is the IC, and that is the A1, and this is the bifurcation. You see, and the MCA is going there, so we are dissecting this aneurysm nicely. And this is a ruptured aneurysm. The PCOM was not ruptured. So the PCOM is here. So I'll have to do some skull based, minimum skull based work for the PCOM. So before that, I'm clipping off the, the IC bifurcation first. Very little dissection. Make sure that it's away from the A1 origin. And I'm going in with the clip. Open, close, open, close, and then clip. making sure my angle is away from the A1 origin or any perforators. So that's it. That is, that is done with the, again, I would uh, like to use a smaller clip, but we do not have the smaller clip, but it's okay, I mean. And now you can see I have taken a bit of the tent. I have taken off the anterior clinoid process here. Little bit of intradural anti-decline. I always like extradural anti-decline dissection, but here I have taken the intradural anti-decline, taken a bit of the tent attachment. Now I've got enough space for the clip to go in parallel to this other clip. I am going to put the clip on. You can see the PCOM origin there. That's a PCOM origin. So I am sparing the PCOM origin, angling the clip away from the PCOM, going in and that's a clip, okay? So that is the PCOM clipped, okay? So, uh, so a few cases we saw, I'm stopping sharing now. I'd like to ask uh, the guys who are around, uh, as to what, what they, what is aneurysms? Uh, how many of you do aneurysm surgeries? And uh, I mean, what can I, what discussion would you want to have with me uh, with regards to aneurysms? And uh, well, if there is anything that we can improve on, and let's have twenty minutes of discussion, please. Okay, guys, the floor is open. Warlux, do I need to prod you? Come on, Warlux. Uh, no, no. Uh, any comments for I? I don't need to. <laughs> for me, I don't have a. Uh, any comments that I learned from Dr. Ais from the Skull Bates conference in Bangkok? Um, I have I uh, ever experienced doing the rupture aneurysm and clipping by myself two cases um, without my teacher like standing behind me <laughs> and it feel warm. Uh, yeah, um, 
uh, I did not have much, much common practice is the necessary and I have to keep practicing even in the, um, uh, the cadaver labs. Uh, I wanted to know because in my, uh, what uh, Dr. I will suggest, my institutions, we don't have the ICG. So um, my teacher, he used the, um, uh, the flow, the ultrasound flow to check the flow in state. Um, some, but some, uh, and then in, he only do the, um, uh, DA, I mean, angiogram after the case that he, uh, have highly suspicious that the aneurysms is not be secured. So do you think that, um, so do you recommend to do the ICG in every case or not if, uh, if it's really needed? Or like for some institutions that uh, we cannot uh, provide to buy the ICG in which is to have like, you know, a lot of money to buy that. So maybe for like, only for the um, something to shake the flow, it's enough. I don't know. Um, do you have any yeah. suggestion? Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. Uh, you know, for my first uh, at least 100 aneurysms, I didn't have a ICG. We got the ICG about uh, eight, uh, maybe nine years back. So uh, we, we got it uh, in uh, 2009, perhaps 2009 or 2010, when the ICG, because I was working with the team that started the ICG with Yoko Kato. Uh, so, and after that, when I came back to Nepal, then we were very impressed with the ICG. Although we didn't have the flow 800 software, we got the ICG and we found that it was not really very useful. I mean, if uh, as a surgeon, if you couldn't recognize uh, that there's no flow, then uh, you know, if you didn't have the common sense to realize it, and if you you said you have a uh, you have a Doppler probe, micro probe, I mean that is brilliant. I mean, if you can use it, I would say it's probably better than the ICG. Uh, so ICG alone um, is, I mean, is just a thing to check. You know, it's it's not. Although we make it mandatory if that every case, because my consultants are doing aneurysms, my, the junior consultants are doing it, and then we want to see how it is so uh, for them in the beginning maybe it's helpful maybe it's not but uh, we have made it a protocol but the ICG is not the gold standard I wouldn't go by if I see there is no flow and the ICG shows it's okay I'm not going to say okay fine I, everything is fine I'm not going to go, go close the case I got to be making sure that I readjust the clip maybe at least three or four times and make sure that I, we also have the probe so we make sure with the Doppler prop that the flow is very good and only then we go ahead and close. So ICG is, uh, is uh, costly and maybe it's not very necessary. Uh, I know there's a lot of surgeons uh, who would differ with that, but uh, we are from the third world. We have all the facilities, but uh, believe me, surgical skills and common sense is the biggest weapons for a surgeon even now. Okay. Very good. Any panelists have comments or questions they want to raise with Ipe? Go ahead, Dr. Agee. Yeah, uh, sir, I have a few questions. Uh, generally, uh, for uh, Dr. Ipe Jarian, in my center, generally, if dissection is complica complicated, we are using temporary clips, but sir just now said that he avoids temporary clipping. We are monitoring that we can apply this uh, temporary clip less than five minutes. So there is no complete like ischemic uh, uh, symptoms post op So my question is why sir is avoiding temporary clips if decision is uh, complicated? Uh, see, it's a journey. It's not that uh, when you start off, you can avoid temporary clips. I would say my first few aneurysms, uh, I didn't know where the aneurysm was. So I used to rupture them before I found them. So I had to 
you know, for a long, uh, lot of clip, lot of aneurysms. I didn't know where the aneurysm was. I'd keep on dissecting and then something would rupture and then I'd figure out that there's an aneurysm. Okay. That was how it was. Then I went to Japan and I was with Professor Sano. Then I understood the anatomy of an aneurysm. Then I understood how to dissect the aneurysm. And then things started improving. And uh, in the beginning, I remember for an ACOM, I would put four temporary clips. Okay. I would put four temporary clips. I'm telling you, I would put uh, on two A2s and I would not be happy with that. I would put on uh, two A1s and two A2s. Okay. Then only I would clip. And if I had any doubt, I would cross clip uh, the ACOM. This was how I did it. So for my first 100 or 200 aneurysms, uh, that was the case. But uh, as we proceeded, then we understood that maybe temporary clip is not very necessary. And then we went ahead and uh, stopped using temporary clips. And that uh, the results improved. So maybe after 500 cases, I'm sure probably your philosophy also would change. And uh, many people have asked me what happens if there is a rupture. Uh, well, at this point of time, rupture is not something which very, uh, very, I mean, really worries me at this point. Because uh, you can go to YouTube and you can see our uh, videos on uh, some rupture aneurysms like uh, basilar intraop rupture, acom intraop rupture. It's not much of a problem, actually. If, you, if your anesthetist is good and then he can give you cardiac arrest, basilar rupture is not a problem at all, actually. So, and the cardiac arrest you need is only for 30 seconds. The key is dissection. The real key is dissection. If you can dissect your aneurysm beautifully, and you can go around it beautifully. And then when it ruptures, it's not a real problem because you just have to put a, put a clip. But if your dissection is poor, whether you put temporary clip or you don't put temporary clips, your, your results are going to be bad. So dissection is the key. So put your time on exposure and dissection. Okay, and then things will be okay. Thank you. Any more comments or uh, uh, Sunil, do you have any comments or questions for I? Sorry to put you on the spot. Just want to keep things rolling. Go ahead, Sunil. Uh, you're muted. Oh, go ahead. Yes. Uh, oh, well, first, uh, I would like to introduce myself. I am Sunil, Dr. Sunil from Nepal. Okay, you're from Nepal. You're in Bharatnagar? <laughs> I, I, I just uh, add, uh, sir, from this visit. Like, I just came to know, like, he's also from Nepal. So that's why I came to here to introduce with him. Uh, I'm recently, like, doing my, this neurosurgery program. This is, like, a master and doctor program in neurosurgery here. So I'm currently a student. So hopefully I could not ask much more. But it's very good. Uh, like first time I just came to know IP sir here. Like I didn't know before this. So it's very good to uh, introduce with you here. Okay, welcome. Yeah, Sunil, good to see you. Which center are you from? Uh, this one is from Suto. From Nepal, uh, it's the uh, No, which center are you working right now? Uh, in the Suto, Suto Medical University. Sucho, oh, I, in uh, no. Sucho. In China, to, no, no, you yeah, can understand, in China. I, yeah, yeah, I've been to Sucho many times, I've been to Hancho, and I've also no, been, no, to, no. I've been to Nanjing many times, I've been operating in Nanjing. No, no, maybe, 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 uh, maybe there is a two Sucho, one is the S, and there is a, there is a two Sucho. The one near Nanjing, what? Yeah, 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 yeah the, the, the one you're yeah. in. Yeah, but the two is the very close. Nanjing is the capital of Suzhou. Okay, yeah. I and mean, there's I mean, another one more Suzhou. Yes, U Z to you. And there's a X U Z to you. Suzhou, Suzhou. It's very confusing. Okay. Uh, yeah. Like uh, right now, like I'm here for six years program. The master and the continue program is the PhD. Yes. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. Um, uh, I, I, I was asking like, uh, recently, like oh, in Nepal, like oh, where do you work, sir? Is it the yeah. Birat Medical uh, Birat Medical College or Novelloen? 
Nobel. I'm in Nobel right now. But Takashi, do you have any thoughts on aneurysms you'd like to share with Ipe and the, the group? Takashi, do you have any experience doing uh, aneurysms? Uh, oh, he walked away. I don't know if it's, I guess it's not working. I guess it's not working. Uh, let me see anybody else in the panel have any comments. Kiyoshi, do you have anything you want to share with the audience about aneurysms? I have no experience to uh, of aneurysm. I'm okay. Not okay. Okay. Very good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Nasser or Nashadin? Nashadin? Any comments? Hello, sir. Yeah. Hi. Okay. Go ahead, Nashadin. Any thoughts you want to share with I? Well, actually, in our center, we don't have aneurysm surgeries. Unfortunately, we don't have any experience with the aneurysm surgery. I hope one day I will become fellow of uh, Dr. Iyad to learn how to do uh, operation for the aneurysms. There you go, Ipe. You do ha have fellows. You can talk about that a second if you want, Ipe. Yeah, yeah, that will be nice. That will be nice. Yeah, we have uh, uh, four fellows per year. So yeah. uh, this is the Asian CNS training program for skull base, vascular, and trauma. Um, these guys spend six months with us and uh, after six months uh, they take an exam, online exam from the ACNS board and they are certified as ACN, uh, Asian Fellowship in Skull Base, Vascular or Trauma. For vascular they learn uh, aneurysms, they do microvascular anastomosis and for skull base they, they do Peters drilling, they do anterolateral dollings approaches and all that and then they assist me in theater. And for trauma, those guys uh, do cystinostomy. This is a technique that we, we started uh, diverting CSF from the cisterns. Uh, instead of uh, doing a decompressive hemicrinectomy, we, open the, we go through a skull base technique and then we open the cisterns and get the pressure down. So this is called cystinostomy. So these are the three things that we have uh, fellowships for if you are if you are coming, if you are already a board certified neurosurgeon, we can accept you. You can come to our center and we'll be happy to have you. Thank you, great sir. I am now in training. I am uh, for second year of boards, but fourth year of training in neurosurgery actually. I'm still a resident. So. Very good. Okay, you're, you're welcome. Whenever you want to come. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, uh, thank you. The value, of this, the value of this platform is the networking aspect. Geraldo, do you have any comments or questions for Ipe from Brussels about regarding aneurysms? Do you do aneurysms at all, Geraldo? Let me see, where do you go? Geraldo, do you, uh, do you do any aneurysms up in Brussels? Yes, yes. Uh, we make uh, men a lot of aneurysms. If you want, I can show you some ones. Yeah, well, can... Okay, well, it's up to Ipe. It's up to Ipe. If you want. Uh... Sure, sure. Okay. We have here, up. Uh... Yeah, just click the share first. Yeah. Share and then pick the screen. Here. Yeah. yeah, there you, you go. See? There you go. You got it. We got it. Yeah. This is uh, a Jupiter aneurysm and uh, with a uh, very thin. Uh, wall and uh, I don't know but we use uh, many times uh, temporary clipping we don't have problem with this uh, we can I think better uh, control the aneurysm uh, I think you can hear this? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we can hear this. Yeah. We put a, 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 a 
temporary clipping to work the aneurysm, you can reduce the time, you can reduce yeah. uh, the sac, the aneurysm, and after that we can uh, put the definitive uh, clipping. Yeah, yeah, yes without problem and we use many times a temporary clipping and we never had the problems with this and yeah. for the, we have some uh, uh aneurysm that we can't uh, i will show you a, a little powerpoint uh, up. about this hmm. you can see the yes no I be... you can see no yeah. we can't Everyone cannot. no no i can't see the powerpoint ah <clears throat> what are you showing I... us geraldo i would like to show the I think the screen may be frozen. Ah. If you want we have a, 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 a technique for some owners you can't uh, clip in. Uh, I think the video is frozen. Did you want to show us something else? Yeah, yeah the video is off now. Yes. Ah. The video is off. Just go back into the screen share. Huh? You, you fell off. That happens a lot. And now? No? Not yet. Not yet. It'll take a while to learn this tech. It's a little tricky sometimes. Click on the share the button share first. Button. The share button first. Okay. And then you go to the screen you want to share. Yeah. Ah. Share and then the screen. Okay. You share. Okay. Mm. Yeah, just click to share and then go to your screen. You got to click to share first. Yeah, uh, yeah. Are you close? You, you did it before. You'll you'll get it. Yeah. Uh, there. But not yet. You got to click that share button first. At the bottom Wait, of the screen. You? The bottom of the screen, the share button. There, there you go. There you go. Okay. Management. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Okay. Yeah. Yes, got it. Okay. I just would like to show you. We are using our department, uh, Emma Shield, or Emma Guard, is a technique to uh, occlude the aneurysm. You can't make uh, vascular surgery or endovascular surgery. It's the blister aneurysm, like that. And uh, we have, I will just show you, aneurysm like that, is a very, very little aneurysm, but uh, uh, we had two patients that had a rupture with this kind of aneurysm. Mm. 
and we can put up uh, no no is uh, is another one is a very complex anomaly we can uh, make uh, a temporary clipping to work and uh, after that put the clip to exclude the aneurysm, but you have a new wall here, you can't clip in. And we can use the Emma guard or Emma shield to protect this wall. And after that, we have uh, aneurysm completely occluded and protect. We have another one here is in fundibulum huh? aneurysm. And you can use the same technique to exclude this aneurysm. And you have here a control, this kind of aneurysm before and after the technique. Another one, a little aneurysm, and after is a, a technique uh, is a very simple technique, and uh, with a, a very good result. Don't in our department we make uh, temporary clipping without problem. We use this technique for the little aneurysms that can't. Uh, put a clip directly or endovascular surgery and uh, we publish with Bicetra a little uh, uh, series that we don't have uh, any complications and no uh, deceit. You know? I don't know if you have the same uh, experience with this kind of aneurysm or not. Yeah, I mean, uh, Geraldo, the point is uh, um, we all have our philosophies and our experience. So, you know, I respect that you put your temporary clips. I said, I mean, they sometimes, yes, it really helps. For me, I generally, for ACOMs, uh, for MCAs, for basilars, or um, other aneurysms, I generally do not put it temporary. And Yuha, in fact, is, is much more experienced than me. But then when he was working with me in my center in Nepal, he was putting temporary clips without any problems. I've seen that. But uh, probably uh, in the early phase of my career, I've put temporary clips and I've had some problems. And so I have managed, I have uh, learned to operate without much of temporary clipping. Mm -hmm. So, but that is not the correct philosophy always. Your philosophy, I completely respect it. And I understand that many surgeons do clipping with temporary clips is much more easy. But uh, I would, I generally, I mean, I can show you a rupture without a temporary clip. I'll show you something. I'll just uh, yeah. show you. And I'll show we you. We have the same, huh? Huh? But we have two. The aneurysm, you didn't make temporary clipping. But sometimes it's a very good option. Yes, absolutely. I, I agree with you. Now, I can show you long time back, I had a rupture when I was not using temporary clips. I'll show you this. Um, Okay, this is on the YouTube, so you can see this, John? Yeah, uh, hold on. I... Yes. Yeah, so let's go to full screen. And uh, this is an uh, aneurysm, which we're using a very minimally invasive technique here. We're going to the, this is uh, maybe almost uh, two years or three, two and a half years back. So that is an uh, optic nerve. And that's a carotid, it's a left side. So I am dissecting. That's a carotid there. 
the aneurysm is here. I know that the aneurysm is between the optic nerves. So we are just getting enough space for temporary clip, if at all it's needed. We are dissecting the proximal sylvian there. Now that's aneurysm. There, there is aneurysm. So I am, I have dissected the IC. I have not even dissected the ACOM because the ACOM is far back. This brain is a little bit tense, so I am going directly over the aneurysm. So I am dissecting the arachnoid over the aneurysm, opening and exposing the aneurysm completely now. No temporary clips in there. I'm dissecting directly above the aneurysm. That's aneurysm. So that is probably the rupture point. Now, there is the aneurysm. I'm seeing, starting to see the vessel. Uh, that's the optic nerve. That's a carotid. A1 is still behind. So this is probably the turn. This is an inferiorly pointed ACOM. It's not a big, 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 big problem as I showed you in the first video. This is, not, this is an uncomplicated aneurysm. So I know if I get my clips between here and there, I have this aneurysm. So that's the aneurysm, probably the rupture point there. You can see that black area. So I am trying. Hello? I, I don't know what happened. Oh, John? I, yeah, you just fell off the screen share, I think. OK. I just got to restart this, the uh, PowerPoint. OK. There you go. There yeah, you so the aneurysm, can you see that? Yes. Right. So I am trying to get space for this aneurysm here and with no, absolutely no temporary control, nothing. I mean, we don't have even. Uh, <laughs> We don't have even the vessel for temporary clipping. So now you see I'm trying, I'm a bit adventurous. I'm trying to get some space between the aneurysm base and the optic nerve. I'm not pushing too hard, but I'm just trying to make some space. So at this point, uh, and you see what happened? That's a rupture. Okay. So no temporary clips, nothing. That is 1438. 1438 that happened. And... You see it's ruptured and 1442 minutes we have a clip on the IC. That is not enough usually, but we, we are not really unduly worried or something. We're just dissecting the aneurysm nicely here. There's absolutely no hurry. It's 1441, three minutes after the aneurysm is ruptured. So you can see the turn of this vessel now. So one thing is if it ruptures, it's a beautiful opportunity for you to clip. So now you can, I'm seeing the tear, that is the tear that is very close to the turn of the vessel. So I know that I need to be very careful here because I have, to, I cannot compromise the vessel. So that's aneurysm. And I'm putting my patty there and I'm dissecting further so that I get space for clipping there. I've seen the vessel. Now that's the turn of the vessel. That's the aneurysm beginning there. So I'm going to put the clip now. It's 14.40 to four minutes now. I'm going to put a patty there and then I'm going to put a straight clip there trying to incorporate the tear into my And you see what happens? <laughs> yeah, 
Yes. Now I'm going there. That is the tear. I'm coming as close to the tear so that I can incorporate that tear into my, into my clip. That's it. It's finished. 1442, the aneurysm is clipped. You can see the contralateral A1, the ACOM, the A2, and that is a clipped aneurysm. Okay. And that's optic now under very high zoom. So um, this is what happens when you, when you have a rupture, as uh, Dr. Geraldo was saying. Yes, it's sometimes it's really nice to have a controlled atmosphere. But even without that, we can survive. There's no problem. Uh, the only thing is, uh, all our philosophies are right. It's not that somebody's philosophy is also only right. It's not say I'm not saying my philosophy is only right. Of course, uh, Dr. Geraldo's uh, way of doing it is also absolutely right. So, thank you very much. Okay, very good. Okay, very good. Any other comments or uh, questions for Ipe before we close? Thank you, Ipe. We'll get better at developing this tech and get uh, uh, interactivity going in the community. And thank you all. We haven't met Victor yet. Hold on. Well, hi, Victor. Can you please introduce yourself? Hi. Uh, I'm Victor, where are you from? Can you talk, Victor? Uh, let me unmute you here. You're muted, Victor. Unmute. 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 There you go. Hey. Go ahead. I'm Dr. Victor Andronaki from uh, Kishinev, Moldova. Oh, welcome. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Do you know that uh, I had two very good friends from Moldova. Uh, one uh, works in Sheffield right now. Do you know him? I know very well. Acha. Marcello Ivanov? Them, yes, Ivanov and, and the president. I was Grigori supposed to come Zapuklu. to Moldova. Huh? And Grigory Zapuklu. Yeah, so uh, I was supposed to come for his daughter's wedding to Moldova, uh, maybe about two or three years back, but uh, I couldn't make it. But he, uh, he as well as Ivanov, I, I, was, I met them in Sheffield uh, when I went to Sheffield. So uh, both of them are very good friends of mine and I'm very glad to see you. So please convey my regards to both of them, to Grigory and to, to Ivanov. You know, the people that know, don't know ge geography well, Ipe and Victor, Moldova, that's a country. Could you play, tell us exactly where it is? It's, in, uh, it's between Romania and Ukraine, a small country. Okay, Moldova. That, yes. Okay. Moldova. Moldova. Okay. Very good. <laughs> Very good. Okay. Um, any party comments, uh, Warlocks? I know you, you're getting antsy there. It looks like you want to say something. No. I, 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 I uh, feel like I'm going... <laughs> Okay. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, Warlocks. Oh, no. I'll let him say. He about to say something. I think Victor, Victor, he's about to well, say. Oh, go that. ahead, Victor. You have something to say? Yeah. I, I don't understand. Did you want to say something? I thought you, uh, I cut you off there. <laughs> no, I joined uh, um, a little later and I, I don't understand every, every Okay, thing. well, it's going to, it's all recorded and that I'll let the audience know that this is all recorded. It's on neurosurgical TV in the uh, conference section. It's archived. It's all archived. So I'd like okay. to thank you all for coming out. Uh, Warlux, Takashi, Victor, Ipe, especially Ipe, and Geraldo. Thank you all for coming, and uh, it'll all be taped. And I'll close right now. Thank you all. <laughs>